Breaking tonight at 10, the blockbuster indictment of former House Speaker Mike Madigan. Federal prosecutors accuse Madigan of masterminding a plot to enrich and empower himself and his friends. Tonight, Madigan denies any guilt. Our team coverage begins with NBC5 Investigates Phil Rogers and the indictment. Phil? Allison, Mike Madigan was the longest serving state house leader in U.S. history, 36 years. Tonight, the feds are calling it the Madigan Enterprise. Nothing more than a scheme to preserve and enhance the speaker's finances and political power. The indictment represents a tectonic explosion, not just in politics, but in the very fabric of power in Illinois. The indictment alleges a long-term, multifaceted scheme to use public positions for unlawful gain, including no-show or low-show jobs for Madigan's political workers and private gain for Madigan himself. In all, the former speaker faces 22 counts, including racketeering, bribery, conspiracy, wire fraud, and extortion. We don't tolerate inappropriate behavior. That was Madigan four years ago, commenting on allegations of sexual harassment within his political organization. But this indictment suggests he not only tolerated bad behavior, he virtually weaponized it, putting the squeeze on various companies, chief among them Commonwealth Edison, to pay the associates who helped him to wield unprecedented and historic power. At times in return for performing little to no legitimate work for those businesses. There are familiar names. Former 25th Ward Alderman Danny Solis, who already is known to have worn a wire on Alderman Ed Burke, is known in this document as Alderman A. Solis allegedly schemed to send business to Madigan's law firm in exchange for the Speaker's help in getting an appointment to a state board. Just leave it in my hands, Madigan reportedly promised, although in the end, Solis didn't get the job. According to the indictment, lobbyist and former City Club President Jay Doherty received more than $2.3 million lobbying for ComEd, portions of which were to be funneled to Madigan loyalists. A lot of the benefits here are the benefits that are going to um, the political <laughs> allies and associates of Madigan who received those low-show, no-show jobs working for ComEd. Tonight in a statement, the former speaker denies doing anything wrong. Throughout my 50 years as a public servant, I work to address the needs of my constituents, always keeping in mind the high standards required and the trust the public placed in me, he said. I adamantly deny these accusations and look back proudly on my time as an elected official. Stefan, he faces up to 20 years if convicted. Phil Rogers with us tonight. Phil, thank you so much. He was nicknamed the Velvet Hammer. Mike Madigan insisted on party discipline, but tonight his fellow Democrats are trying to distance themselves from him. Also, Governor Pritzker now confirms the feds interviewed him just last week. NBC5 political reporter Marianne Ahern joining us on the story tonight. Marianne? Stefan, Governor Pritzker's spokeswoman says tonight that Pritzker was pleased to cooperate as a witness. Republicans who have been cut out of the legislative process for years have been waiting for this day for a very long time. We have got to root out these people in public office if they have committed acts of corruption. Tonight, Governor Pritzker says the feds say he was only a witness when he was interviewed last week about his experiences with Mike Madigan. The charges allege Madigan promised to meet with Pritzker about a state job for Alderman Danny Solis, but Pritzker does not recall that request. There's no allegation in this indictment, um, you know, against the governor or his staff. Still Republicans running against Pritzker, like Richard Irvin, say the governor cannot totally distance himself from Madigan. J.B. Pritzker bought 35 of Madigan's people off a clout list on his administration working for the state. Madigan's power was legendary. Legislation did not get through without his stamp of approval. He was forced to resign a year ago when Democrats started peeling away. Reaction from both sides of the aisle from Springfield tonight. The first thing you do when you get cancer is you cut out the cancer. Then you treat what happened afterwards. This is not over and that there will be f further charges against individuals uh, down the road. Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Somebody who has really shaped Illinois politics for 40 years. You better have a tight case because if you're going to take the shot, you're not going to want to miss. Madigan still holds a political job on the state's central committee, but tonight the Democratic Party of Illinois is calling for him to step down.
Reporting live, Marianne Ahern, NBC5 News. Marianne, thank you. Madigan's indictment comes after decades of political power, as Marianne just mentioned, that originated in the ward politics of the southwest side of Chicago, where he still lives. NBC5's Alex Maragos continues our team coverage tonight from there. Alex? Allison, things are quiet tonight at the Madigan household here. No one in or out, not even a light on in the front from what we could see here tonight. The Westlawn neighborhood here has been the base of Mike Madigan's power for decades, and now the federal government says he used that power for his own benefit. The 79-year-old former Speaker of the House was seen driving into his garage this afternoon, not long before federal prosecutors charged him with 22 corruption-related counts. In his 50-year reign here in Illinois' 22nd District, Mike Madigan climbed to the highest levels of political power, but he was also a neighbor, seen often at local gatherings. Usually when there's like, like holiday events around here, he usually gives out like stuff to the community. Few neighbors wanted to talk to us about the charges levied against Madigan, who also ran the 13th War Democratic Organization and chaired the Illinois Democratic Party. A kingmaker who demanded fierce loyalty in the state house, Madigan said following the ComEd scandal, quote, I'm not a target of anything, unquote. We now know that wasn't the case, as the man who rose out of the Chicago machine to the most powerful post in Illinois looks at an uncertain future, potentially far from his southwest side home. And though Madig is no longer serving in Springfield, his campaign funds and political funds still have plenty of money. Friends of Michael J. Madigan finished 2021, according to state filings, with over $10 million in the bank. Reporting live in West Lawn, Alex Maragos, NBC5 News. Alex, thank you. NBC5 will have continuing coverage of Madigan's indictment. You can read all 106 pages of the indictment on our website, NBCChicago.com, or download the NBC Chicago app.